and I believe it's the exact same two inputs. Um, but the computer I'm doing this on, and to be clear, since I started the screen record now, you guys can still hear me, right? I have to assume that there's always gonna be something that's gonna crash. Okay, fantastic. So, um, I have a lot to talk about, and uh, the good news is I'm not, I'm not going, uh, okay, Alessio can hear me in general chat, thank you Alessio. So I'm gonna try to jump back between the stage channel chat and general chat because um, that's just kind of been the, the pace. And um, anyways, I, am, I really appreciate you guys showing up for this. And I actually wanna start off by just saying like a round of thank you. And Alessio, it's fine um, because Yeah, it's fine because, uh, yeah, we well, electronic, I'll let you know. Um, I'll be doing one of these probably like once a day, if not twice a day, um, for, for the next week or two or three. They're not always going to be three hours long. They might be more like one hour long. Um, and I don't, I, I'm not going to necessarily have time to do them twice a day every day, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be inundating you guys with training on this, inundating. So you're going to, it's like drinking from a fire hose of information. And I've been told that I am like a fire hose of information regularly. So I'm just going to spend the next two weeks destroying myself in order to adequately teach how this works to everybody who wants to learn. And um, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of complimentary stuff that I could talk about first, um, but I don't think I'm going to talk about it too much here. Absolutely electronic. Um, the first thing is I could, uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank every single person from uh, the lurker in the chat who literally has been watching this and has said nothing to um, vocal community members, to my critics, to my supporters, uh, to the Sandy Ridge Circus troop in general, uh, to the developers within the troop, um, both present and absent. And um, I want to thank the people who like believed that I was not bullshitting about this. Uh, I, I really, I really want it to be clear. Oh, well, thank you, Bo. Um, I want it to be clear. I didn't ruin my life for almost two years to like blow smoke up a bunch of asses that belong to strangers on the internet. Does that make sense? Like, I don't think, uh, it's clear on the other side of the screen how much I put into this because um, the concept of terminal utility was something that I was um, trying to teach to Tomb Fork founders, the Tomb Fork devs, um, 18 months ago or longer. Like I want to say April of 2022 was when I first started preaching it. And um, I guess what I needed to do was I needed to go on a journey of my own to understand that I needed to learn how to better communicate with people who thought differently than me and had different backgrounds than me. And I think what I was probably blindsided with was how as time goes on, people actually get more and more specialized. They get more and more, um, they, they get more and more different. Yeah. They don't have that conformity. They, 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 they avoid it. So, um, I'm not going to harp on, my, on this subject forever, but the point being is that was like a, a journey of discovery for me because I realized I could actually solve a problem uh, that nobody else could. And this kind of began shining like a fucking beacon to me because um, I've sort of trained myself to look for those, those things. But anyway, um, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to spend this entire three hours just, you know, um, pontificating as it were, but I want to, um, you know, talk to you guys about what this is. And I think you guys have seen the documentation, um, like things like the PyroSwap beta testing handbook, which is right here. Right. And, um, if you haven't, we'll go over this real quickly. This is probably where I want to start off. Um, there are other stuff that I'm going to talk about, including super cycles and sub cycles. I'm going to talk about red candles being good. I'm going to talk about night profile players versus witch profile players because, by the way, it's a little bit of both for everybody. I'm going to talk about how um, this is actually a social deduction game, by the way. If you guys have never heard that word before, here, I'll write that in the channel. Social deduction 
game. And not only is the incantation of witch fall a social deduction game on its own, but there's another social deduction game that goes uh, with the tomb forks. And then there's a third social deduction game that goes over which investors are playing for which team. How do we deduce that effectively? And um, I think arguably speaking, we're going to have this proof of concept kind of proven here in the next few weeks. And um, I think everybody will begin to understand how this works over time. And most importantly, uh, which I'm sure you guys care about, the prices of the coins, which you guys are holding, perhaps exposed to significant downside and loss for the last year or two, will actually begin um, resurrecting, for lack of a better way to describe it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about... Um, the first thing I want to talk about, yeah, I guess I'll just go through the PyroSwap beta handbook. Right now, this is the this is the closest thing we have to technical documentation, and hilariously, it's written conversationally. So uh, that's going to be a little bit weird. But again, I want to congratulate everybody for their patience. Uh, this this is a this is a this is an ecosystem that is designed to reward patience. Um, the fact that we've been delayed for so long had a silver lining associated with it because we got to really narrow down who the most patient people were in these communities. And um, believe it or not, this does not require um, this does not require this type of uh, shilling your own position to somebody behind you so that, that you can tempt them into buying in and buying your bag because the players themselves will want to accumulate the coin. Like you don't need to bring new players in. Like that's, I know this is hard for people to understand, but the way that the incantation is fed, it's actually catalyzed through um, the, the general background activity of arbitrage bots. So everything involving exit liquidity, everything involving like the bag, your bag getting pumped, you don't actually need to go shield this on other servers. Like you can actually keep this a secret. And the best part about that is that um, as far as as far as um, as far as like legal legal constructs and legal structures pertaining to um, pertaining to cryptocurrency, it's actually the promotion and the um, and the shilling of it that is actually where the biggest violations of SEC law are. If that makes sense. So. Uh, according to SEC law, it's not it's not the same thing to create a security as much as it is to sell it. Does that make sense? So like the sales the sales process of a security, that's where you get into violating the SEC. And I know maybe you guys don't care about that, but um, this was a really big deal back in 2017 and 2018 when I first kind of got introduced to um, the Ethereum ICO fucking boom. But <clears throat> The goal of this is to evolve Web3 and DeFi into something that actually has cases where red candles can be good. Uh, that is an advantage that I'll have you guys know the top 25 market cap projects arguably don't even have. Um, at least not as clearly fundamentally as PyroSwap does or the GPSC in its, in its own way. So. Uh, the table of contents, you, you guys have seen this document before. Uh, the disclaimer and dominication in terms, we have a what is a Ponzi scheme, quick educational bout, testing normal DEX functions, which I'm sure you guys have done. What is meeting and metatrage, testing meeting, meeting and metatrage. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. As you guys can see, the majority of the pages here, uh, about half of the document is between page uh, 17 and 32. You guys see that? About half the document is new. So... We're gonna blur through all the stuff up into uh, page 17. I hope you guys are excited. I'm not gonna waste anybody's time. So I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, this disclaimer and identification in terms. You know, um, first of all, I want to talk about this five dollar equivalent position. Uh, first of all, you guys should know that this is not audited smart contracts. I'm gonna start off by saying these are not audited smart contracts. The smart contracts we inherited from Uniswap and SushiSwap, those have been audited hundreds of times okay so if we're starting off with a vanilla fork of uniswap v2 you can assume that all the stuff that is vanilla attached to uniswap v2 is audited by inheritance here i'm going to write that here audited by inheritance because where we took it from was audited additionally tomb forks themselves people have gotten them audited does that make sense in fact some of the ones i believe dibs has been audited uh i believe two ohm has been audited but i don't know if that company's still around um They've already been audited. 
as far as what's not been audited, there's really just two parts, and that's the meeting utility and the incantation witch vault utility. Now, what's great about this is that you really only need $5 or less to use those utilities, and what they do is they don't hold capital. Like these, these utilities are not designed to be safe places to just like hold capital. So uh, the meeting utility, and by the way, that was in the design principles going back to 2022. I wanted to make the most streamlined MVP possible, and um, therefore I realized, okay, what can I do that you know fulfills to you that doesn't involve a big pile of money waiting to get um, exploited and robbed by a hacker? Does that make sense to you guys? Like these things are not meant to hold like you know a million dollars and just sit uh, and just sit on the shelf for like hours and days. Does that make sense? Meeting utility is an instant utility. Like it literally just funnels your money through as it were uh the incantation at most we have a six hour window where the incantation itself potentially can get stolen but that's not that's not your money that's the that's the platform money and then your money should arguably not spend more than a few minutes inside the incantation which fault so um the fact of the matter is is the uh, the high paced nature of this game is in fact its own deterrence to exploitation because as far as bad actors go, they're going to be more enticed to look at big piles of money that they can find a way into the silo. Does that make sense? Like the way a rat would rob a grain silo? Do you guys understand that metaphor? And you guys can still hear me, correct? Okay, fantastic. All right, so uh, this is the point. We, we're gonna keep the, the, the mechanisms right now, keep the money moving fast and in small amounts. And I know that you haven't seen a launch, a quote unquote launch before that kind of has this, um, that kind of has this paradigm, that kind of has this approach, but I want you to know that everything we're talking about here, um, if it doesn't work in small amounts, it doesn't work in large amounts. Does that make sense to you guys? Like I am not interested in just being another charlatan running their own bank that has no idea that they are in fact running their own bank. Does that make sense? Like I have nothing more than the most severe goal of making myself in the Sandy Bird Circus extremely distinct from what you could consider the herd of other builders. And I say that with extreme finger quotes do in web three. Okay. Because what I see them accomplish is, um, probably like the proliferation of garbage. It looks like a landfill that's in the fossil record. That's what I think about like these hundreds and hundreds of projects and forks that just get fucking pumped and dumped or even rug pulled. It literally just looks like human nature just dumping garbage on the ground and then it ends up in the fossil record, which is like, like you wish that was limestone, but no, it's, it's just like a landfill. Okay, that's, that's, that's how I look at like, yeah, exactly. Don't even get me started. But the point being, uh, I'm of the opinion that there is more money in fixing broken projects and there isn't launching new ones. Sometimes, um, sometimes, well, you know what? Um, I'm not going to comment there, Electronic, but um, I, I would rather prove that this works with literally a group as small as 20, like the audience here, before, before it scales to 200 or 2,000 or 20,000 or 200,000. Because if it doesn't work with 20, it doesn't work with 200. Like the price chart can trick you into thinking it works with 200, but that doesn't mean it works. The price chart is definitely obfuscating um, certain components that financial instruments need to have um, established for them to actually not be garbage. But anyway, I'm going to keep going through this document real quick. Okay. So if this is the first time you've heard about the risks of Web3, let's talk about it. Investing has risks involved, and these risks are especially high in the world of Web3 investing, if it should even be called that. Um, to participate in all in Web3, knowing the above, is to be aware of the risks and consent to them. Uh, I want you guys to know, very rarely do people like discover Web3 for the first time, and then they jump into the world of Tomb Forks, okay? The risks of Web3 are not a secret and make international headlines regularly, especially concerning actors like Sam Bankman-Fried and Do Kwon, along with their associated products, etc., etc., etc. If this is the first time you're hearing about the risks of Web3, do not participate at all, okay? Consider yourself not authorized, close this document, disconnect your wallet, go outside, okay? For those of you who are aware, $5 equivalent position or less. For, uh, for Pyre Phantom, you can eyeball this at around 100 Pyre Phantom, which is gonna be the token we're gonna be using today. 
Um, Pyre Phantom will ebb and flow. The price of it will go up and it will go down, um, especially during this beta test because I'm sure people are perhaps um, playing with the price chart right now. But additionally, over the next weeks, you'll see that it goes up and it goes down. And it, this is because it's a vibratile token. It is a sub-cycle. Um, its performance is a sub-cycle of a larger thing called a super cycle. And this is an economic concept known as Elliott Wave Principle. I'm not gonna get into that now. But the point being is, uh, is that red candles aren't always bad. We'll get into that more later, okay? Uh, if you do live in the United States, nothing about pyre swaps, beta tests, constitutes a security offering of any kind. Um, I write this here for people who live in the United States because when you talk about a security offering, the SEC doesn't care if you live in the United States. They care about if you're, if you're selling to Americans. But we're not selling anything. Yeah, all of these instruments already existed, right? Does that make sense? Like a mead token is like a compensation token. That's how we look at it. Like, okay, well, you know what? You can have this token instead. Um, when I talk to you guys later about thinking about mutual credit systems, thinking about endogenous money systems, you guys will understand that the mead coin actually represents bad debt that's consolidated and the peg coin represents original debt that is, um, I guess you would call it, yeah, originated debt versus consolidated debt. I actually don't remember the vocabulary there, but we'll get back to that much later. So, um, According to Investopedia, the Howey test that determines what is qualifies as security consists of four criteria, an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. So believe it or not, here the best part is that this is, a, this is an ecosystem that does consist of a variegation of financial instruments that kind of lean against each other. There are other things that are valuable in PyreSwap besides the tokens themselves. You might not realize they're valuable because you think of them more as sources of cortisol rather than sources of dopamine. But things that are valuable include time and then they include information, okay? So we care a lot about an epoch system because that's time, whether it's a time constraint or it's a window of opportunity, okay? They, you, they are valuable to you because you do notice them. And then additionally is information because information helps you make decisions which then helps you take action, okay? This is something I'll get into way more, but okay. When we talk about being an investment of money, uh, new capital is not really required. New capital is not really required. Um, I know that's really foreign for people, but I understand that a lot of you are gonna bring in new capital anyway because you took it out in the past or whatever. So like new capital kind of inevitably shows up, especially when you look at red candles being good. Um, <clears throat> But it's not really required. This could be done completely without new capital because the people who are bringing new capital in are, are known are as arbitrage bots. Does that make sense? Arbitrage bots are in fact bringing in a trickle of new capital. Um, the GPSC is comprised of several defunct applications and I'm not gonna go into all that, but that is how you could argue that this is, not, not, this is actually not even in a common enterprise. But anyway, um, and then arguably speaking, the real reason we're doing this is not to pump your bags or make you guys cajillionaires, but really to actually mitigate loss. Like if you guys become cajillionaires as a byproduct, good for you. But like that's not really the purpose because arguably speaking, the way Web3 likes to run things is they think about, oh, we need to be a launch pad for launch pads for launch pads, right? You guys all heard that before. Um, and I'm not going to say that there isn't money in that, but there's also money in breaking into abandoned buildings and stripping them for copper. Okay. So, um, I'm more interested in building something that is sustainable all the time. It self perpetuates and in fact gains excitement over time, not just exciting on the first day. And then it, w and then it, you know, fizzles out for a week and then everybody who's holding, they just end up, um, joining the cult. And I, I don't mean that as an insult to anybody because um, I'm arguably holding quite a few coins that just went down from all time high. Let's put it that way. So uh, again, there you go. The, the, well done. Okay. So the Senorid Circus has not engaged any marketing or promotion associated with the beta test. That is also um, something that insulates us from being looked at like this is a security offering. The Senior Circus does not use language, any public facing communications that consists of the world's an IPO, ICO, IDO, initial XYZ offering, or any acronym that could, le that could lead a reader to believe this was the activity being conducted or that the organized sale of a security was taking place, blah, 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 blah. You guys don't care about this shit at all. Uh, I'm going to keep moving. Participants also waive their right to cry like a little baby when their feelings get hurt, okay? Um, for February, we'll be a little bit lenient on this, but... Um, 
we have a NFB policy, which we'll go into here in a second. What is a Ponzi scheme? You guys have heard this word before. Okay. Here's the definition from Investopedia, from Merriam-Webster, from Collins Dictionary. But really what we break down is a Ponzi scheme needs new investors to pay old investors. It isn't actually profitable and it promises little to no risk. Okay. This one does not need new investors, which by the way, when I say this, and I know that a lot of people don't understand this, in Web3, it is quite likely that 100% of the things you've touched before could qualify as Ponzi schemes. So maybe you don't believe that this could be possible, but believe it or not, outside of Web3, Ponzi schemes are extremely uh, difficult to look people in the eye and maintain. And like people do serious jail time for this. But because these projects are so fucking tiny, the uh, regulators don't have the bandwidth to chase down every single particular crime, if that makes sense. But I'm not going to get into that either. Um, this one does not need new investors. Rather, new investors will show up because they're going to watch price charts slowly start climbing. They're going to see, wait, why is two ohm at 0 0.20 TWAP? They're going to start showing them back up again. One of the reasons and advantages about acquiring a bunch of defunct projects is that we acquire the wallet lists with them. Does that make sense? Like we literally just bought the communities because why wouldn't you just launch your own project? It's like, well, believe it or not, one of the advantages is you can actually just start off with communities. Like you don't need to market when you just acquire the communities up front. Does that make sense? That's also why we have five different discords at this point. Okay. Um, so, and promises little to no risk. Again, that is nonsensical. Like don't ever think that that's ever a case in, um, in, in, in anything, in any investment vehicle. Yeah, there has to be risk. Now, the thing is, is that there's a difference between financial risk and security risk, but we'll get into that later. What's funny is that I've seen people in DeFi, in Web3, they'll be looking at like a Genesis pool, like a Genesis event, and I'll see people make the argument saying, I don't know if this is a rug pull, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with a smaller bag, which is super funny because what that means is they're analyzing a security risk as if it's a financial risk. Does that make sense? They're like, I have no idea if this is a person that is literally running a wildcat bank, literally just trying to defraud people on the internet. And therefore, I'm just going to like expose less debt to them, right? I'm just going to expose myself less. And this is arguably why security risk and financial risk ends up getting uh, consolidated or compositedly um, analyzed. But they are, in fact, separate risks. They are, in fact, differences, right? Uh, a financial risk is something that you consent to because it involves market behavior, it involves a trade you're making. A security risk involves you getting stolen from. Does that make sense? Trade and theft are not the same things. Like they're, yeah. If, if you can't differentiate trade from theft, you will have a, um, you'll have a difficult time understanding anything in the world of economics. But anyway, I'm not going to get into preaching about this forever. So Pirate was not a Ponzi scheme. Like you don't need this. Like we don't need new buyers. Believe it or not, arbitrage bots literally are... How do I describe this? They are they are shook into responding to your general activity, and they end up bringing in whatever exit liquidity you need. I'm not joking about this. Okay, it is not required marketing because the price charts themselves do the marketing. Okay, they compound in profitability on their own when left alone. Also, do the underlying economics. Okay, so. Um, it does have risks and PowerSoft does have risks, but we're extremely transparent about them. I started off by talking to you guys about auditing before, okay? So by the way, anyways, external capital from the paper hangers of the past will arrive whether you want them to or not because once the prices are recovered past a certain TWAP threshold, more and more people will notice, which will lead to them bum rushing in with YOLO money. Like every single one of you guys knows this happens because you're probably one of the people that do it, okay? They will do this automatically, unsolicited and unprompted. I don't need to fucking DM them about it. You don't need to DM them about it. You don't need to go, you know, uh, shill it in a different server. Yeah, you don't need to, you know, sell it to your uh, private group. Yeah, like they'll do this either way because they're gonna look at, um, they're gonna look at top gainers list. They're gonna look at um, hot tokens, right? Volume list, and that's how they're gonna show up again. That's I, I guarantee you, we've done this already. We already see this that. Uh, we saw it in the, the Avalanche server. This entire Japanese group of investors came in and told us we were scammers because we didn't have the farms labeled as being, uh, as being lapsed. And it was kind of funny, but the thing is, like, they literally have not touched this since 2022. But as soon as they saw it happening again, they, they came back in uh, and tried to deploy in farms because they knew that, that, something, something, was, uh, they knew that something was happening.
Oh, great question, Electronic. So believe it or not, we actually look at this uh, as a team in the Sandy Ridge Circus. So we, we even have like this acquisition committee. I'm not gonna, uh, that guy deserves a lot of credit, by the way. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna name drop people who deserve credit on this particular recording. But um, basically I built a heuristic for acquisitions, which is actually pretty good. And then somebody who has um, a greater amount of blockchain forensic skills, they specifically built an auditing list about thinking about every single possible contract and how it's controlled. Does that make sense? So, um, yes, yeah, so believe it or not, there were these concerns. Like, for instance, we couldn't acquire new oracles. We had to deploy new oracles, right? Um, now, I want you to know um, that, basically speaking, you can already analyze the exploit vectors that a project has. Like, people who are, um, people who, uh, okay, I'll point them out, GV in the audience today, right? That guy is very, very good at um, sifting through and filtering and reading blockchain data through Block Explorer. Does that make sense? So people who are similar to GV, and, I, and there are people like that all over the Web3, uh, they can basically analyze where there's a flaw in uh, contract control and like the custody configuration. So uh, I myself did not have the ability to uh, go through that list. So I literally had a committee of people uh, I want to say four people were helping me make these acquisitions, if that makes sense. So, uh, especially speaking, by the way, um, once we do that electronic, it's configured to um, the owner and the operator being switched to a different wallet. So, like, if the owner and the operator gets reconfigured to a different wallet and that wallet is my wallet and that wallet is controlled and locked through hardware um, in 2FA, then that is effectively what insulates us, if that makes sense. Now, to be honest, there is still potential um, upsets that could happen in the future. But to be honest, um, we're also we're also going to repeg these as the V1s, and uh, later on we will probably do V2 migrations just for, in fact, distancing new contracts from old owners across the board. Does that make sense? So we're gonna do that either way because it's beneficial for a few different reasons. And I'm not gonna go into the, into the V2 stuff yet, but by the way, that won't hurt anybody's bag. Like it's, it's um, that'll be even easier than doing meeting, if that makes sense. Do, doing a token migration is even less screwy to your bag than doing meeting, okay? So, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I would say so, Electronic, because the uh, that backup has already had a bunch of treasury money sitting in it. Arguably, it has I think around fifty. I don't know. It's got between twenty and sixty grand on it, right? And uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a hardware wallet. Like so, um, people would need to know my pin. They would yeah. It's like if somebody had a gun to my head, I would probably just get shot because I'm obstinate. But um, yeah, like it, it's very difficult so far to. Um, to actually break into that. But the point being is, is that um, minting permissions are basically locked. Yeah, so uh, right now, by the way, oh, well, for sure, uh, well done. By the way, there is there is minting permissions on both the Mead contract as well as the Incantation Witch Vault. So there is another concern that could somebody exploit and possibly figure out how to me uh, mint a shit ton of Pyre Phantom and then dump it. Yes, it is quite possible. Like it's not outside the realm, but that's also why you guys are encouraged again to test this with five dollars. Like what we'll do is we'll we'll play with five dollars for the first week, and then as at on week two, I'll kind of allow everybody to double their exposure, and then on week three, I'll allow everybody to double it again. Does that make sense? So slowly but surely, um, it'll allow you guys to play with larger amounts as time goes on. Um, and that way you guys can always play with your risk appetite. So I'm gonna get into that later in the uh, presentation. In fact, I hope I have, good Lord, I gotta get, I gotta get through this document. Um, but there is a concept that I call terrazzo, which means balance. It means the balance of a scale. And let's put it this way. It makes more sense to risk $10 to scalp a 10% yield, then it does to risk $100 to scalp a 1% yield. Okay, 
And believe it or not, I think Yehub, that was something I wanted to tell you in the past as well because I was trying to explain to you that wailing the witch fall is not necessarily like the, the move because if most of the players are trying to risk $10 to scalp 10%, that's a $1 gain. Uh, using $100 to scalp 1% is also a $1 gain. But the thing is, look at the difference in risk. Why, do, why would you risk $100 when you could just risk 10 does that make sense? So this is another terrazzo. And if you guys don't know what that word means, it's this, it's this, it's this um, instrument. Okay. If that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. So believe it or not, there is a balanced approach to playing this game and it doesn't involve people yellowing their fucking mortgages anyway. Okay. It involves you guys kind of being smart, which I know is a lot to ask. I know it's a lot to ask, but I believe that um, people have the ability to learn things through practice, which is what we're doing here for this beta test. Okay, so going back to my screen, um, you guys know they do this. Metatrage is that later. As you guys are aware, at least when the price, when the charts are in fact active and climbing, you can in fact just metatrage your own bag larger while also making the prices go up, okay? For testing normal DEX functions, I'm assuming you guys have done it, so we're gonna skip right past it. If you guys haven't tested that yet, good luck. Um, what is meeting? What's metatrage? You guys know what this is. Does anybody want me to go over meeting and metatrage? Does anybody want this? I'm pretty much going to skip it unless somebody requests that we talk about it. Okay, no requests. We're just gonna keep moving. Anyway, if you, uh, I'm gonna, I am gonna be doing a lot of stage time in this channel. So if you guys want me to go over meeting and metatrage in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Um, these are diagrams you guys have seen before. Okay, testing meeting and metatrage. I'm assuming you guys have done this. Okay, if you haven't, well, um, you'll definitely get your get your chance to do this. Um, you're gonna want to approve contracts, and I'll be doing that here on my uh, on my wallet here shortly. And these right here are the margins about where Metatrage could possibly be profitable. Right here, it is not profitable. Right here, you would in fact be meeting two ohm for a token slightly less in price while on, additionally while paying a 3% meat tax, right? So this is actually not a profitable meat, uh, but I'm assuming you guys know what that means now. Um, additionally, PyreSwap is a endogenous money system and it has complementary currencies. currencies. Uh, I'm not going to get into what that means now, but this is a paradigm where looking at multiple price charts to look for correlations is going to be what gives you a little bit of edge, perhaps what gives you a little bit of alpha. Uh, and we can go into the details of that later. Anyway, don't over mead, And I want you guys to know that applies to staking in the witch vault as well in the IWV. Okay. You guys should play with $5 at least for the first 10 times you do it. Okay. If you guys want to know when is it correct to scale up from $5 10 times. After 10 times, you can scale up $10. After another 10 times, feel free to scale up $20 and then you can then use your own discretion. But I would say you're welcome to keep it at $5 for the first week of this, whatever chain you're on. So whether that's Binance or Avalanche or, or Phantom, you're welcome to keep it at $5 for the first week and then, you know, double there. But like, you know, try to mitigate your own greed, okay? Like this game, I want you to know, it's even exciting with like a handful of people. Like I'm just playing it with like Kia Dezo and Yahoob and like Yeti, I think, uh, in during closed beta, which by the way, was only like two days uh, for this. And even with just like three or four people, it's still exciting to just like rush in and stake uh, <laughs> some money. <laughs> I, I personally enjoyed it myself. Uh, I will be playing it with you guys because, by the way, we have one coming up here in a little under two and two and a half hours. Um, so I hope you guys have read this yet. But incantation is a uh, it means a spell. It means like a magic spell. So when we talk about an incantation witch vault, it uses a smart contract known as a summoning circle. And the summoning circle is like the magic chant that kind of gives this power. If that makes sense. Um, and that is something that's kind of going to be aligned with the surface level game fi, the uh, the lore of Pyroswap, as you as you will. Um, but that is, uh, we'll talk about more about in documentation. And I'm assuming you guys have have learned about the concept of this getting beaten to death. I'm not going to talk about what incants are. Um, 
either because you guys should understand that they are in fact just a unique way of distributing a DEX reward, like literally DEX fees. Um, now, we have to answer that question by contrasting what the IWV is against the incantation. This will be quite conducive to your understanding and even your comprehension. The incantation is the actual event, the activity that provides positive yield to the IWV and rewards the stakers with incants, thus incentivizing staking in the IWV. The, the incantation witch vault, this is the staking smart contract, the location that receives the positive yield from the incantation in the form of incants, which is what we call them, but disincentivizes staking in the IWV by providing negative yield. So negative yield is a penalty that is effectively um, that your position receives based on the popularity of chasing that positive yield. So this is in fact a risk offset. And this is why um, this, this, this is also a terrazzo as it were. This is also what makes it super exciting. This is what makes the game extremely exciting, competitive, and um, it's actually the invention of a new financial instrument as well. But more on that later. I'm gonna talk about this as well. Are you more confused now? Let's get into the fundamentals. We need to shift a paradigm for that beautiful little brain of yours. The IWV's debut is a new concept in DeFi that has, been, has not been widely seen before. Uh, this concept should aptly be called active staking and is a contrast to passive staking. Passive staking is what is usually found in other uh, staking mechanisms. So additionally, the IWV is yield scalping and not yield farming. Okay, do you guys understand that? This is yield scalping and not yield farming. So I want you guys to understand that this is not a yield that you're gonna collect the same, with the same approach angle, with the same approach uh, strategy, okay? So you guys already know what passive staking is. Active staking, you're not likely familiar with this. This is what applies to witch vaults. By the way, there are more witch vaults in this one. Um, quantity that you have staked has negative yield. And so being staked is an exposure to risk. IWV rewards received in cans for staking can offset and compensate for this negative yield if the staker is tactical, attentive, and not an impulsive imbecile, okay? Price of stake quantities also expose the market behavior, and this is stake in zero chill compared to stake in chill, which is arguably something you hear people say. Um, active staking is high adrenaline staking. This is meant to be an exciting um, and uh, it has a it has a degree of chance to it with a little bit of strategy that's meant to kind of entice. Um, well, you guys will see here in a couple of hours. <laughs> when we say high adrenaline, we mean it is not it is not meant to be a position you should ever feel comfortable leaving unattended or being distracted from watching closely. Oh, electronic, you're giving it away. You're giving it away. You're giving uh, you know what, electronic. Let's find out if that happens. Let's find out if that actually happens. Okay, so, so um, when I say you should ever feel comfortable leaving unattended or being distracted from watching closely, uh, it's dangerous as fuck to leave a stake position in the incantation of witch fall at any time. Um, however, if you were to think about like the most optimal lengths of time, they would probably be less than 15 minutes. Like I can't really see it ever being useful to be staking there for more than 15 minutes unless you are in fact uh, locked into the uh, locked into an arcane incantation, which is a little bit more of an advanced concept that happens when Pyre Phantom and Pyre BNB and Pyre AVAX actually get to peg, okay? But um, most of the time, I'll tell you this, from most of February, it's quite possible that Pyre BNB could peg in February, by the way, because Pyre BNB is only working on dibs. So if you guys are here from the dibs community, it is quite likely that dibs and Pyre BNB could in fact be above 0.8 in February. I don't know if that will happen for Phantom and Avalanche, but they could also be near peg and uh, above 0.8 in March, if that makes sense. Is this is not this is not impossible. So um, my prediction, yeah, my prediction is that uh, BNB could be at peg in February, and then the other two. Phantom and Avalanche are more likely for March. But again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong as fuck, okay? So, uh, now everybody understands smoldering by now, right? So for everybody who stakes in after you, and let me, let me get this part clear. If you're in an active staking position, you need to be actively focusing on and monitoring this position, 
and preparing to exit, the, exit this position when you're satisfied with the results, unless you have significant experience and along with the risk appetite of a kamikaze pilot on their birthday, okay? If, if, you, if you remember anything from this presentation, remember me saying this. If you have the risk appetite of a kamikaze pilot on their birthday, that's when you should feel comfortable leaving a stake position in connection with results. Okay? Negative yield involves smoldering, and this is an offset, okay? You guys know what smoldering means now. I'm not going to get into the definition, but you guys are encouraged to read this document again if you need to. So if you remember during the Revelation tour, this is an example again, but I don't want to spend a lot of time reviewing here. I want to finish this document arguably in the next 16 minutes. A certain design feature that emerged much later now is the staked Pyre gas token, which by the way, we're talking about staked Pyre Phantom, staked Pyre BNB, and staked, yeah, these three tokens right here, staked Pyre AVAX. Uh, these tokens are now what you hold when you stake in the Incantation Witch Fall. That is a different, that's sort of like something that um, development determined was the best way to facilitate this, this um, solution. And I like it and I agree with it. Uh, these tokens are not in liquidity because they would be failing the sync check like every five minutes. So it's kind of nonsensical to have them in liquidity. Um, later on, when we reconfigure the decks, we will have them in liquidity and that will add a new parameter paradigm or um, that will add a new um, strategy to, to playing the playing the Incantation Witch Vault. Um, but yeah, if that makes sense, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Wait five. Let me make sure I understand. If being staked in the witch vault exposes you to smolders from other users staking in after you, doesn't this imply that users will jump in and jump out? Yes, that's exactly what you should do. And if the incantation only gets distributed four times daily, doesn't this imply users will all stampede at the last minute and then stampede out and eventually some of these will be running bots? Yes, by the way, 100%. Users will be running bots uh, and they'll be stampeding as well. But it's not really easy to run a bot consistently because as you guys are going to see in the next document, there is enough variables involved in yield scalping that if you were to give a bot a certain set of instructions, um, as other players get savvier, they will absolutely learn how to manually screw up a bot strategy because there is all, yeah, I, would, I want to say that there's at least like 20 different ways that uh, human actors can interrupt what a bot thinks he's going to win. Additionally, keep in mind, as soon as one bot is built, other people start building bots. And what bots do is they ruin botting for other people running bots. So um, with every incantation, for instance, we immediately have like sandwich bots and arbitrage bots crawling all over the decks. Like they're all over the decks. So that's not even like, for, for someone else to bring in a, a bot to play the incantation, they have to deal with like a swarm of other bots just like stampeding across the liquidity pools. Does that make sense? So God forbid they screw up their you know priority gas on one of these transactions and like it could be over for them. Does that make sense? You guys will see that later. Um, now I don't I don't disbelieve that some people will figure out how to run a bot profitably, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be the only person winning this game. And it also doesn't mean that uh, their strategy will um, hold itself up over time because markets tend to make um, markets tend to make anything that's guaranteed to be self negating later. So if, if somebody's running an incantation bot, the market will subconsciously, and I'm talking about you guys, you'll subconsciously behave in a way that ends up with that strategy being more fallible than it was before. And this is also why uh, you have the Jim Cramer effect. Do you guys know who Jim Cramer is? The concept of self-negating prophecy, okay? It's like, as soon as Jim Cramer says it, so many people have reverse engineered his analysis, like up front, that they're already in that position. So by the time they know the, by, by the time they know that Jim Cramer is shilling it on television, they have a bunch of, yeah, exactly, the inverse Cramer rule, right? So by the time that happens, they know that people are going to be coming in with dumb money and it makes more sense to, to uh, get out of the stock. Like this is, this is the moment of exit liquidity. So that is, that is effectively how the inverse Cramer rule uh, manifests, if that makes sense. And you'll, you'll see that on the IWV as well. So the way that this behaves 
in a few months, it could be behaving the exact opposite way. Okay. Um, okay, again, $5 equivalent or less. I mean, like, again, you play at your own risk. Um, by the way, it will likely require an elaborate and intricate subgraph to consistently bot the IWD properly because there's just so many different things going on, okay? Um, do you like diagrams? This is a UML diagram. I'm not going to get into that, but... Um, because this is yield scalping and not yield farming, we actually expect its equilibrium yield to be much higher. We actually don't expect like 1% daily. Um, you could argue that you might see something like 20% daily or 40% daily. I'm not joking. Um, the difference is it's a lot harder to correctly capture that 20% or that 40% daily. But it is 60% uh, daily you could get that as well if the entire server manages to uh, play nice with each other. But I have severe doubts about you guys' ability to do that. So I would say looking at five to 10 to 20% dailies is more realistic. But anyway, um, there's other factors in your total return on investment as well. Okay. So thus what will appear as a preference for a much higher positive yield per epoch resulting in extrapolated calculations of much higher yield per day and yield per year, okay? If the players observe 20 IWV stakers in the previous epoch, so right now we have 18 people in this audience, okay? So if there's 20, roughly 20 stakers, we can estimate that the next epoch will have roughly the same amount. So if, I, if all 20 of us play this next epoch, that means that the next epoch after that, um, the one three hours from now, not two hours from now, that one will probably have 20 stakers too. So you can assume that there's gonna be a negative 2% to that yield. In which case, it doesn't make sense to play for yields smaller than 20%. No, sorry, smaller, blah, smaller than 2% gain because you now need to offset the amount of stakers against positive yield. So you have an, ex an expectation of stakers and then you also have an expectation of positive yield. Positive yield is easy to calculate because we actually park it for six hours, but negative yield is always a guessing game. Now, the good, the good news is, is that half of the stakers end up with less than 2% negative yield. So if you learn how to stake really late, you'll end up with even less negative yield than the person who staked in front of you, okay? So I want you guys to understand, looking at this chart, do you guys understand that 1% and um, positive 1% and positive negative 1% are the exact same percentage. And this is actually difficult uh, for people to understand. But percentages have convexity to them. So when you add a, uh, if, your, if your portfolio was to gain a 10%, um, was to gain 10% alpha, it would only take negative 9% alpha for you to get back to your starting position. For you to gain 100%, you only now have to lose 50% to go back to your starting amount. Does that make sense to you guys? For you to gain, for you to gain fucking 500%, now you only need to lose 83% to get back to your starting amount. I hope you guys understand how, that, how this works. So the negative yield is a rounded number in the example. So again, we're rounding the number to keep it easier because it wouldn't actually be negative 10% here for 100. It's actually like negative 9.1 or something like that. But the point being is it's easier to do the mental math if you round it, okay? So... Right here, I'm gonna be training you guys all to play during this first week as if we expect there to be 50 stakers and we should target EPR target number three. Because what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna play as if you can possibly gain 16% yield per epoch. Per epoch, that's not per day by the way, that's per epoch. So per day that would be like 64%, right? Now your, your own greed will end up screwing this up. I want you guys to know this. Your own greed will end up screwing this up. But if you play for number three, you'll still likely be able to close ahead of number two. Does that make sense? Number one, target number one here is too close for comfort. Like you have no idea if you're even profitable because you have to now have a positive offset of six to offset negative five just to, just to, clean, just to claim 1% yield per epoch. Okay? It makes more sense to think we expect 50 stakes per epoch and therefore, we're going to have negative 5% to yield. Therefore, learn to play uh, as if you want to walk away with 16% yield per epoch. Yeah, I know. It sounds fucking huge, doesn't it? Well, once you add in the exhilaration, you'll understand why this is the case. I'm going to go back to this later. But anyway, 
This chart right here will be something that's worth to have. Um, I will, of course, post it in the chat so people can see it. And um, this will be an image that gets used as reference a lot and we'll post it in one of the channels here too. So you can always reference this chart to kind of eyeball what your target will be. And by the way, this is something that the, the this is something that you guys as the investors are encouraged to try to discuss in general chat, okay? Now I'm talking to all of you as if you're not playing for the knights, but rather that you're playing for the witches. Does that make sense? The knights have their own problems and the witches have their own problems. Does that make sense? So if you're in this server, you're going to focus on the witch side of the game. Does that make sense? If you want to worry about knight problems like printing or getting back to pay or getting back to prints, stuff like that, that's why you have your own servers. Um, but if I'm talking to you guys in here, I'm going to talk to you guys like you're playing the witch game no matter who you end up being loyal to, if that makes sense, okay? Um, all the players will end up playing a balance or a ratio or a biased kind of 80-20, if you will, between the games because you kind of have to learn how both sides of the game work to just get good at one part of it. Um, but you guys are encouraged to openly discuss how many stakers you expect and therefore what everyone should target and then even discussing... Um, Kind of like a um, kind of like a Byzantine general consensus. Arguably, it is game theory about okay. If if Pega knows that HR Hustle is going to play with five dollars, and he knows that Zonic will play with five dollars, and Electronic and Bo and GB will all play with five dollars, then they know that they're all going to affect um, negative yield and positive yield the same amount. So you can you can eyeball how much EPR will get compressed to at the last minute. Um, however, you guys will always have the temptation of going against what people are doing. There's always that temptation as well. So this is where we end up with this being a social deduction game. Do you guys know what a social deduction game is? Deduction me. Okay, popular social deduction games you might have heard of are board games like Clue or mobile games like Among Us. Have you guys heard of board games like Clue or mobile games like Among Us? Mafia? Okay, I didn't even know about that one. Okay, Bowman's heard it. Okay. You guys know the board game Clue? You guys know mobile? Uh, Clue has to be like 50 years old. Like, I don't know. Clue is probably maybe even 100 years old. Like, it's a very ancient game. Um, and Among Us was a, uh, a coronavirus, I guess, phenom. But um, yeah, if you guys are aware, there is a social deduction aspect into figuring out which investors are working with you and which investors are working against you. And by the way, blockchains are ledgers uh, that determine whether or not this is happening or not. So it will be the instruction that we all try to aim Let's put it this way. If there is 20 people playing and you guys figure out how to keep a 16% EPR, every single investor can claim 16% EPR. Wouldn't that be great if every single player was walking away with 60% yield every day? But because of people's um, disloyalty or rather because of people's inability to play as a team, you will learn that this 16% is a, uh, it's like communism. Does that make sense? It eventually it fucking falls apart. Let's put it that. <laughs> you can always talk like it's gonna work, but uh, you know, in the la in the in the ultimate moment, as it will, you'll you'll learn real quick about who's uh who's on your team and who isn't. Okay, in a scenario where the active user base is approximately one hundred, you have about negative ten percent of positive again. And okay, it's now recording again. All right. So that's probably only like five minutes that got missed and we'll, um, yeah, I didn't say anything there anyway. Yeah, anyway, okay, so I'm gonna go back to Alessio. So we can dilute rewards to the first one clicks claim or till everyone claims. Great question, Alessio. So right now, if I stake, we can just do this right now and you can see it in real life. I have 103 Pyre Phantom. Do you see this, Alessio? Okay, do you also see that the EPR is 7.7 .7 and the DPR is 30.7? Do you see that? Okay, so I'm gonna click stake now. I'm gonna see if this needs me to, oh, come on. 
I'm not a fan of this wallet to be honest. This is all, I'm not really, I don't really use this wallet either. I actually, this is the first time I've legitimately used this wallet just for the sake of this, of this demo. <laughs> um, it's not terrible and it, I guess it came as an attachment. So I'm gonna stake 103 uh, Pyre Phantom and you'll see right here, 1197. I don't know if you saw that, um, Alessio, but it jumped immediately. And did you see that EPR is now down to 7.0? Okay, fantastic. So I've already diluted it. Does that make sense? So now everybody gets a smaller return, right? Because now the person before, they were waiting on a 7.7 .7 return, but now I've taken after them. So their return is also, so not only did I smolder them, by the way, right? So their, their position got smaller, but also they now have to share the pie with me. So everybody's return is smaller. Now, if I claim an unstake at all, uh, this will return the EPR back up higher, right? So the first thing you'll see is you'll see that this number goes back down to 1093. And then this number right here, it's about five seconds of lag, I noticed. Um, but yeah, 7.7. .7. Do you guys see how it jumped back? And that's real, that's a real EPR. That's not a that's not like a fucking inflationary shit coin. Does that make sense? This is not a shit coin, by the way. That's the best part. Yeah, this is a fucking, this is a fucking pro coin. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Not for beginner coin, okay? So, so, Alessio, basically what's going to happen is these stakers here, they're going to get sent, they're going to get sent 84 uh, Pyre Phantom as in cans. Does that make sense? 84. And there's one guy who's, uh, who staked for 885. Do you remember that part? There's one guy who's staked for 800. So he's probably waiting to receive 7.7% 7 .7 of 885, right? So if we pull that up, his total reward would be 885 times 0 0.077. Does that make sense? So he alone stands to gain 68.1 of those of those Pyre Phantoms. Does that make sense to you? Okay, now if he was 885 and I dropped it down to 0 0.07, meaning I took it down from 7.7 .7 to just seven, he now only gets 61, whereas he before got 68. You see how I literally reduced his, his uh, yield by seven Pyre Phantom here in the history? Okay, so this is just based on the divvy at the stroke of the epoch, at the roll of the epoch, at the transpiration of the epoch. This is how people are allocated. So what that means is anybody who brings in 885 they're allowed to have 68.1. Does that make sense? So let's go back to this. Let's go back to this right here. So if that guy had 885 and he was um, he was about to receive 68.8145, then basically what this means is um, if we were to divide this by 103, that's 8.5 because I have 103 Pyre Phantom. Does that make sense? So what that means is for every 8.59 Pyre Phantom you can stake. You're allowed to receive. Um, you're allowed to receive. I believe it's one actually, right? Hang on, hang on. For every eight of these I bring in, I can effectively uh, take one of the Pyre Phantom that's associated with him. Does that make sense? So if I have 103 times eight, what this, what this effectively allows me to do is. Um, Actually, now I just reverse that, right? So I now multiply this by 103. No, sorry, hang on. I would, um, damn, I'm my algebra is rusty today. Um, I divide this again by 103, right? And I have 8.59. So it's one of these, and for every 8.59 you bring, you're entitled to one. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Does that make sense? One of his reward at 6.8. So. Uh, what that means is 8.59, if I, let's see, inverted that, that's 0.11. Does that make sense? So uh, my position is worth one ninth of his. Does that make sense? So what that means is I have to, if I thread through nine times, so if I usurp once, I can immediately walk away with one ninth of his reward. Does that make sense? Now, here's the thing. If you start getting usurped, 
and uh, let's say they're only allowed to t they're only able to take a little bit a, um, a little bit from you at a time. If you notice you're getting usurped, you can still claim the rest of your reward and exit. Does that make sense? Because if you're entitled to more than it's in the pot, you will in fact take the whole thing. Does that make sense? So diluting up front is a different fraction than diluting by usurping. Does that make sense? Because the ratio here is frozen, whereas the ratio up here is dynamic. Does that make sense? Oh, oh, because it believes that you're part of that. Because it believes that you're part of that. Yeah, all it knows, all it knows is that staked pyre phantom is worth this amount in, in camps. Does that make sense? Because believe it or not, Alessio, there isn't any pyre phantom staked. The pyre phantom that gets staked is burned and it mints you staked pyre phantom as a receipt token. So when you unstake, you're in fact burning your staked pyre phantom and then minting pyre phantom back. But they're almost 111. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, that would just be the same amount. So, um, 1100 is just 84, the number I showed you before. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, 1100, among 1100, you would have, what is it, 84? So, for every 13 Pyre Phantom states, you would have access to one or whatever. How does the calculation differ pre epoch and post? Oh, Yahoo. So when you do pre-epoch, it, it increases the denominator. When you do after, it, the, that denominator is frozen. It's static. So if I do it like this now, right? If I stake in now and I drop it down to 7.0, that is effectively how much, um, how much uh, 1,200 would get yield for. Does that make sense? But after the epoch has transpired, the rewards are already sent. Does that make sense? They're just now waiting to get picked up. So what is determined is that at the moment uh, of the epoch, this amount of staking entitled you to this much amount of encants. But the thing is, it does not care where that where the staked pyre phantom comes from. Does that make sense? Like it, it treats all staked pyre phantom the same. So you don't get grandfathered in for being staked in. Like all you have to do is show up with staked pyre phantom and you're entitled to it. Yes, and in fact, you're, yeah. Well, no, 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 you're, uh, you're jumping that small to that. Um, no, 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 you're in fact, imp you are now pretending that you are a larger part of it when you usurp because you're not, you're not, um, you're not, you're not increasing the denominator. Yeah, exactly. You get what I'm saying? So like the denominator is the same, but you're now pretending that you were in there before because yeah, exactly. So in theory, your yield is a little higher as a usurper, but the fact of the matter is, is like a usurper's ability to get yield is a little bit harder because generally speaking, people will figure out not to fucking do this. Hilariously, by the way, um, I'll tell you this, there's what um, a good dozen or few people. Okay, uh, let's say a dozen people in the audience right now, we all decided to usurp in the first minute. Believe it or not, we will all net make money. Yeah, we will, uh, we will actually, that the people who are staked will end up getting hurt the most, but our, um, our gains from usurping will definitely offset, uh, the chance that one of us, um, that we accidentally smolder each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. So all 10 of us could fucking usurp as it were, or all 20, how the fuck many of you are. Okay. If 10 people in here usurped, that would only be like 1% of negative yield. Most if you staked to usurp and then for some reason didn't unclaim, right. Uh, or they didn't unstake, but yeah, so other usurpers don't really bother other usurpers that much if that makes sense but like in theory you do get smoldered by them but like not compared to the people who fucking staked in early right by the way there is a guard for this there is a 600 second guard that we did install in the iwv and what that would effectively do is create a 10 minute grace period 600 seconds after the first you know um after the first minute of the epoch where uh, we're staking, we're staking in is not permitted. And what this does is uh, basically we built this because we felt that if too much usurping is happening, 
uh, maybe if it's automated or if it makes the game like unfun for people, we can in fact um, turn this guard on so that you can only use Serpent for 10 minutes. Does that make sense? We don't have that guard on right now, by the way. So uh, don't expect us to unless like, yeah, people are really fucking stupid. I, I don't know. To be honest, I don't expect to ever have it on, but we might make it a feature later that people can, um, that the witches can activate if they do something, if that makes sense. There you go, Electronic. You, now you're thinking. But honestly, what I would do is what I would probably do is make it something that you have to stake uh, the farm coin for to create something like that. Yeah, I'm not going to get into like later phases, but uh, there is a farm coin for this deck called Pyre, which doesn't exist yet. And what I would do is I would make it so that you have to stake Pyre in its own Witch Vault. And what it does is it requires that the amount of Pyre in there goes up or rather stays the same over a certain amount of epochs in order to maintain the guard. As long as, but if Pyre's, if Pyre's staked amount goes down by too much in that, in that Witch Vault, um, yeah, the guard is disabled. But we could also do that with Pyre Phantom as well. Like another reason to stake Pyre Phantom. Does that make sense? Like another Witch Vault, we could call it the Guard Witch Vault, right? And effectively speaking, you just have to make sure that the amount in there. <laughs> Shit, that's gonna be crazy as fuck. Uh, that's probably a decent idea. We might build that later. Um, okay, uh, it's now 30 minutes until the moment of usurping. Do you guys have any questions? Um, I also, uh, these buttons right now don't work. They'll be, they'll be effective uh, in a day or two. If you want to bail out, which by the way, you're more than welcome to, I would keep the swap screen open in another tab. Does that make sense? It's not, it's not that hard to do. You just have it maxed here. You're like, okay, it's gonna max out. Um, it's the same fucking thing. Uh, but we have it here to kind of let people know that not only do you wanna get out in the first minute, but you might wanna sell to a different coin because uh, Pyre Phantom's value is the lowest earliest in the epoch. Does that make sense? The only value it has is for usurping early in the epoch. As soon as usurping is done, there's no more fucking value to it. I hope that makes sense to you guys. One pyre is 0.1 reward, 10 each. Okay, next epoch, nobody claims. No, no, you will get you will get a you will get a hundred out of no 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 nope you will get 0.10. Everybody else gets, uh, everybody, oh uh, yeah. You'll get, you'll get it as if you were the first 100. You are not diluting the denominator. Yeah, if you usurp, the yield is higher, right? Like, it's like, oh shit, technically I'm not affecting the denominator. So, yeah, that's basically it. Because you're effectively, yeah, you're taking other people's encants. You're not, like, they're, they haven't claimed it. But the point is, is that they actually, uh, for the, for the, yeah, this is another reason to get the fuck out of the witch ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, you're, you're impostering as if you're, uh, let's put it this way. Alessio, have you ever been to a restaurant where they check your coat? Has anybody here ever been to a restaurant where like if you're wearing a jacket, they, they check it, like you, you get a voucher for your jacket? Okay, so this is like you, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Alessio. Well, one day when, when we repeg to them, you'll have enough money to go to a restaurant where they check your coat, okay? Yahoob, you've never been to a place. Yahoob, I've been to restaurants in Poland where like you have to check the coat because it's always fucking gray and cold. Get out of here. Um, okay, so anyway. Um, okay, so do you guys know how like you would get a ticket for your coat being checked? Do you guys understand that? You get a ticket for your coat being checked. Okay, if you usurp in cans, it's like you have somebody else's ticket. Does that make sense? You have a voucher for a coat that you didn't actually, uh, you know, bring in with you. <laughs> you are, yeah, you are. So that is in fact the bet. Yeah, 
That is the Chad move. Unfortunately, Seabiscuit, what happened here is that some dumbass basically caused, yeah, a fraction, yeah. You're basically taking a sleeve off of 10 people's jackets, Yahoo. You're taking a sleeve. You, you leave with 10 sleeves, 10 jacket sleeves. Yeah, Seabiscuit, 100%. The Chad move is doing that most of the time. The Chad move is doing that most of the time. Right now, we're in this education stage because people don't know that this is yield scalping. So right now, you're noticing that this is like, yeah. Does that make sense? So you could do it right now. Like, like Seabiscuit, you're more than welcome. Uh, let's put it this way. In 26 minutes, if you guys want to stake, stake. I'm not joking. You'll still get yield and you can jump out. Does that make sense? But also, I'm very, very convinced that the player with 800 is in there. He's not going to leave. Does that make sense? In which case, usurping looks more um, um, attractive. Usurping was a little bit more attractive. Am I making sense? So yeah, by, by all means, Seabiscuit, what you're describing most of the time is the right move. Like stake last minute and then fucking jump out in the first minute. That is, that is exactly like what you're supposed to be doing. Right now, this other actor is kind of fucking up that game or rather he's not fucking it up. He is leaving a good 7% yield that, you know, if you wanted to stake in, you could come in with your own bag of 800 and still walk away with a 3% yield. Does that make sense? Like it's not a terrible yield at all, right? Exactly, 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 Fexer, yeah. And believe it or not, Fexer, um, believe it or not, they actually take their nominal amount when they claim. So actually the last person who leaves, they get fucking robbed. Does that make sense? So it's actually a little bit different than that too. Do you get what I'm saying? Because if they're entitled to 10, they still leave with 10. It's just the last person doesn't have any left over. The last person leaves with zero. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm saying there? Yeah. So, 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 so whoever unstakes 11th there, right? Unstaker number 11, they get zero fucking yield. And they probably got fucking small little shit ton too. This is a, this is again, not for beginners, not for beginners. Yeah. So everybody really gets 10 if they bring in 10. Um, but yeah, so like whoever unstakes last, they don't get any yield at all. And by the way, so for you guys to understand, I'm going to bring in, um, 103 here, right? And then I'm going to take about 10% or rather, rather one ninth of the yield, right? Or whatever, one eleventh. Then what, then what I can do is I can claim it on stake and then stake it again. And I can literally loop it through. So when you usurp, you can loop. Does that make sense? Because I don't have a thousand fucking um, Pyre Phantom on this wallet. So I'm going to use a hundred and I'm going to loop it through and I'm going to basically take fucking uh, enough of the yield where I can just keep taking it until it's gone. Does that make sense? Because I can effectively con... You can compound usurping. Does that make sense to you guys? You just have to be quick, right? Like, I expect this guy's gonna be so fucking slow though, I'll just do it, you know? Um, oh, and by the way, and by the way, when, you're, you're, when you usurp, when you usurp, yeah, I know, I would flog it more too if there was more money there. <laughs> uh, when you usurp, you are taking the risk of being exposed to the coin while all other uh, while all other stakers while all other players might be dumping the fuck out of it does that make sense does that make sense to uh um sea biscuit fixer do you guys get what i'm saying so usurping has its own risks involved as well because everybody else if they're over here claiming on staking and max swapping and you're like oh i'm gonna go usurp uh, this has a risk because it's like you're running up a mountain during a fucking mudslide to go try to steal somebody's bacon. Does that make sense? It's, um, it isn't always like the optimal strategy, but it just so happens that right now, this is a pestering fucking strategy. Oh, arguably, um, usurping is keeping the system healthy, you know? So arguably, it, um, uh, Yahoo, that right there, we're, um, okay, the credit rating system is actually agnostic. Oh, Alessio, yeah, because you're a confirmed knight. Yeah, so you have the you have the uh, role here known as flagrum, which, by the way, means scourge, and it's also where the word flogging comes from. Does that make sense? So, yeah, you are a confirmed knight. 
And uh, that therefore, by the way, later on in beta, so later on when, the, when, these, when these prices get higher, Alessio, you can expect to be treated in this server as if you are the away team at a stadium. Does that make sense? The visitor team at a stadium sport? You get what I'm saying? Does everybody understand what I mean? The visitor team? Yeah, so uh, Yahoob effectively is on the quartet of the Dib server and Charlotte is on the quartet of this server, right? Right, so Charlotte, Charlotte is going to address people from Yahoob server as if they're unwelcome guests. And Yahoo will do the same thing to people from this server who end up being, uh, who end up gravitating more towards playing for the knights. Oh, sorry, the witches, the witches. Uh, we also have, um, yeah, if that makes sense. And I'm, uh, we'll get into, ba those are Bannerets and Chandlers. We'll get more into that later. Right now, it makes more sense to teach everybody the game because um, the people who love this game, they might not realize they like it more than fucking Tomb Forks. Does that make sense? In which case, they'll be like, why the fuck do I give a shit about staking and printing and then having to braid my liquidity, whereas I can rather just play this crazy fucking Russian roulette yield scalping game, right? Like, there's gonna, you understand that there's a profile of investor that, that yeah, exactly. There's a profile of investor that they're going to get addicted to this because this is a little bit more exhilarating, epoch after epoch, and... Um, Naturally, the knights do benefit from this because they end up being able to meet a tribe themselves above 0.8 from it. But um, you guys get what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, yeah, Seabiscuit, you're correct. The the normal the normal thing to do is to play, which would mean. You stake in the last minute or the last second or whenever, whenever you can uh, for the goal of getting in uh, before incants get distributed. Does that make sense? And then you would unstake as soon as you have them. You'd claim an unstake and maybe get the fuck out of that coin. Um, however, because somebody who wants to bring in a $60 bag doesn't want to read the fucking um, docs, nor come to this, nor come to this three and a half hour tutorial I'm doing, uh, they're going to get the reward uh, you serve from them. And that is fair game. Yeah, also true. Um, and uh, the volumes will fucking uh, start... Um, that's being that should be fully configured here shortly. So like right now we're gonna do this on Phantom for a couple days, uh, and we'll be able to monitor this. Does that make sense? And um, by all means, you're welcome to play at every epoch, whatever. I mean, I said before you shouldn't, but um, you're welcome to play it every day. Let's put it that way. Uh, I would imagine that most people who who kind of fall in love with this game. Um, will probably pick like a few different epochs to play and people on other continents will focus on other epochs. Does that make sense? Like right here, I know for a fact we have North America, we have Europe and we have Australia. So uh, that right there is enough daytime for the entire game to be played. Does that make sense to you guys? So um, yeah. Okay, do you guys wanna ask anything? Um, we can maybe see if, oh, it looks like somebody unstaked. See, so, so now you see EPR has now gone up to 7.8, right? So if you guys want, you're more than welcome to try to uh, stake this down because arguably we know there's only eight or nine stakers, right? So uh, you know they're all in front of you too, right? So there's only, there's only 13 people in this audience right now. And um, arguably speaking, you know that that means at most 1.3% of EPR is negated. So if you're bringing in like a 100 Pyre Phantom position, all of you could probably stake and this would still be like 3%. Does that make sense? So everybody could in fact stake in the last 10 minutes and you would be fine. Like you would be profitable off of it. Uh, granted, this is also why we're playing with $5 test amounts. Does that make sense? Except for that one guy who's playing with 800 and yes, the, the reason I am, I, I am targeting him because, um, yeah, because again, he's not following instructions. 
Um, I don't expect people to follow instructions, but that's also the best part of this beta test that you can punish people for not following instructions. <laughs> yeah, and that's also why we have the read docs emoji. Isn't that great? Just read docs. And yeah, by the way, as far as like docs goes, you might notice that the PyroSwap website doesn't have them. The docs right now, yeah, I know you love them. The docs right now are literally these two docs. Can you do the, the risk assessment one and the fucking beta testing handbook? There you go. That's it. That's the entire document. Uh, you guys now have this and you guys have listened to me talk about parasailing. Do you guys want me to talk about parasailing again? Okay. What happens? Let's go into general chat. I'm going to go into general chat here. So the higher BNB fees, hang on a second. Let me see what he's saying. Oh yeah, or Avalanche. Correct, Electronic. You could describe it that way. But also, uh, the higher BNB fees, yeah, um, let's put it this way, Electronic. Those also prevent arbitrage bots from bringing volume to the decks. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, exactly, Alessio. That would be crazy. So that's also why it's not on EVE. <laughs> um, maybe on Arbitron, right? But like Ethereum is um, not, yeah, not the right move there. But um, hilariously, this this uh, game is, well, fuck it. So the point being here. Um, yeah, so the, the, the gas costs have both pros and cons. So if you're playing on Avalanche, it's like, oh, well, I'm not that worried about getting flogged. It's like, well, yeah. Um, oh, well, Electronic, you playing this game pumps up the volume. Yeah, like, so this thing cannot not compound. Does that make sense? Because if you play it this round, right? What that does is instead of just 84, we're actually moving 800. Does that make sense? Like we're in fact turning the incant into volume for two epochs from now. Does that make sense? So this game has a positive feedback loop. So again, in remember uh, electronic, do you remember when I said on day 64, you might end up playing with $2,000? Yeah, that requires zero shilling. That requires zero shilling. Yeah, like literally right now. Okay, electronic. If everybody here plays with $5 for the first week and they play it for $10 for the second week and then $20 for the third week, by day 32, they already now need to play with $100. Does that make sense? Like just from them, just from people increasing their risk appetite, they are increasing the volume on the decks. Does that make sense? So if that rate maintains for the month two, that means that if it's fucking, if it's February 9th today and it's the first day of this, that means by, I don't know, the same date in April, I guess, well, hang on, whatever, before April 15th, you would now have to play with $2,000 to get the same EPR. Exactly. Yes, exactly, Lesio. Yeah, so uh, when you click TE, it does sync a bunch of uh, Pyre Phantom pairs. Yep. Yeah, I know. It's just so much easier. Um, later on, um, later on, we're going to, um, for, for uh, later in beta, probably before phase two, later in beta though, we will in fact um, probably um, redeploy the DEX contracts so they no longer have the sinking safe, uh, safety belt, if that makes sense. And those contracts will be the ones that have lower swap fees. Does that make sense? Uh, Yahoob, I imagine you'll get it from playing the incantation. I mean, if you're, if you're making 7% yield per epoch, like I don't know how you're not going to come up with two grand, right? Yeah, no, yeah, you can in fact make and compound money with this game. Um, it, is, uh, it is a non-zero sum game. 
Does that make sense? Like it's not a Ponzi scheme. So um, when this when this right here is zeroed, so Doc, you see the counter here, 11 minutes and two seconds, one second. Yep, exactly. And honestly, you hope decay is actually not a direct notion of losing money, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so when this is zero, it'll literally be frozen, right? It'll just say zero across the board. You click this button and that's a small transaction. Um, it's not gonna run this time because it's not, um, it basically kicks the transaction because it sees that it's not ready. Uh, I'll do it, I'll fucking transpire it um, on camera today. You can also see the epoch counter here and you can also transpire it here. I like, did somebody else unstake or is somebody smoldering the guy? Because his amount is even smaller now. Is somebody smoldering, is somebody flogging? I'll transpire on camera, why not? I'm not even staked, Yahoo. Yeah, I'm not even staked. I'm literally preparing to fucking pester. Yeah, this is a pester epoch. Oh, like like wait for it to happen? Hell no. I want to fucking take this guy's money. Yeah. Like I do not want to let him just kind of... Yahoo, I did that before. I forced Kia Dezo into doing it. Like I just, you know, I, I knew that somebody else would click it. But that's also a, a game of chicken. Oh, like transpire like dying. I get it. Yeah. You know, um, that, uh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get it. Okay. So 1,080. Are you guys flogging more? No, for sure they don't. That's also why um, it's more important that I... That's also why I end up using quotation marks so much in my writing. Because like, if I ever want to enunciate something, it's like, do I italicize this? Do I bolden it? You know what I mean? Um, that's yeah, flogging exactly. And this is this is flogging. Yep. Now, did you guys notice that EPR is now seven point eight? Look at that. You can see him. 7.74. Is somebody doing this with like a fucking Autobot? Is somebody doing it like 10 times? <laughs> Is somebody already playing that viciously? I wouldn't be surprised. That uh, Whichever one of you built that bot, um, it'll be more entertaining at um, later parts of this game. Let's put it that way. Total staked wallets is a number... Oh, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, so electronic, um, if you do to this, how to assess risk, if I go, I'll literally, sh I'll show that to you again. So if I go all the way down here, so if I, okay, if I pull up phantom scan, right, open like a new tab, and then I look up staked pyre phantom, right, in order to, in order to have staked pyre phantom, you must have acquired it. Does that make sense? Like, so you must have staked in order to get it. So then I open this, I open a token tracker and I look at holders and I see there's 10 holders. Does that make sense? So that, that's the total staked wallets right there. Can you see this? By the way, that will be on the dashboard shortly, possibly before Monday. So this one right here, this one will probably be ready before Monday, I think is what um, what I was told. So this, this one will probably get done soon. We'll have the PPESD, the Elastic Supply Dashboard up here soon as well. Uh, and these buttons will also be um, finalized soon. A thousand ninety six, is someone staking more? I guess it makes sense now. Hey, by the way, now that we're down to six minutes, it does make sense to stake. So if you guys want to stake, like now's the time to stake. Just make sure that when you claim, you claim quickly because I will be usurping. I'm going to make that as fucking transparent as possible. <laughs> so just make sure you get out. Just make sure you get out. I'm not using any bots. If that makes sense. So um, yeah, I'm going to manually fucking usurp. I will, I, will, uh, I will claim it on stake. It'll probably take me like seven times, but I will take all the rewards, right? And by the way, 
when you finally get your rewards, it might make sense to dump for one of these coins. If that makes sense? Because a lot of other people are going to dump for one of these coins. Does that make sense? And if other people are going to dump for one of these coins, maybe you want to dump ahead of them. Does that make sense? So usurping does have that risk. So whatever the price is now, it's 0.12, right? But by the time I'm done usurping, maybe it's going to be 0 0.08, you know? Who knows? And what I'll do after I usurp, okay. After usurping, I will go over how red candles can be good uh, in detail for all rolls. Do you guys want to play like ominous suspense music? By the way, later on, um, we might have the number, um, the next epoch number. We might make it like flash yellow in the last 10 minutes just to make it more urgent and more, uh, you guys get what I'm saying? Maybe flash orange, like the rest of this stuff. Or maybe the last, yeah, last, yeah, last, probably last ultimate moment here. We'll just make it flash orange. That'll really drive up the urgency. I don't know, like, do you guys understand why we have this? Like, there's a reason I put milliseconds on this. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That should be in the pop-up. Like, by the way, if you if you're if you're prone to epilepsy, please use spooky swap. Right? But it's not gonna strobe like that. No, it won't be like a fucking flashing. It'll be like a um like it'll probably change color like every two seconds. Does that make sense? Not like a fucking super fast fucking uh, thing. Just like an orange to white click back and forth. Like a, you guys get what I'm saying. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, well again, Again, uh, we have them click a box that says, I blame only myself to use this dex, right? If you get the pop-up warning or whatever, let's see if we go to, if we go to Avalanche real quick. This is gonna work. Do I, do I not have that, do I not have that on the, this fucking wallet? Do I not have Avalanche? There we go. Oh, that did not work at all. Okay. So apparently, yeah, the devs are working on stuff. Here we go. Error. But see, if I go to swap. Am I not getting the pop now? That's fucking concerning. Um, maybe I clicked the uh, do not show me again thing. Oh, goodness. Is this going to, are we going to make it today? Goodness gracious. Oh, and when, by the way, yes, um, yes, the last minute tends to be enough time to get in on Phantom. That's what we've figured out so far. Uh, but yeah, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, but at the same time, if you're sticking in now, you'll probably be fine because there's probably not gonna be that many people that jump in. Like there's only what, 13 people left here. So at most you would, you would suffer 1.3 in smoldering. And if everybody else is playing with, five, uh, with about 100, that still means that this thing would end up at like 3. Um, 3.9 EPR maybe. And if it's 3.9 EPR and you're gonna suffer 1.3 negative yield, you would still be that. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Well, good for them. Good for them. Look at that, 1259, look at that. Do you guys see the number jump up? 
Look at you guys. Look at you guys. I know it's you guys. Somebody listens. By the way, look at the EPR. It's 6.2% now. Do you guys see that? Which is still a great yield. Yeah, one minute warning. Bam! We probably won't do sound effects on the website. I was thinking about that for a while, but um, it might be a little bit too much. Let's put it that way. 1400 and look, it's still 5.8%. Yeah, don't be shy. You've got 38 seconds. That's not a terrible yield at all. Like that's a daily 23. Like we're talking about a daily 23% yield here, right? 1% daily is the stuff that makes DGEN salivate. And we've got a daily 23 here still, 5.8%. 1600. Normally EPR takes about five more seconds, 5.1%. Again, like it's not bad. 11 seconds, 10, 9. Do you guys want me to do the countdown? A, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the right way to do it, by the way. You guys did great. Let me see. Transpire Epoch. Is it me? Are you going to allow me to do it? There we go. And let me just slowly but surely make this happen. Don't worry, I'll use priority gas, okay? Pending, you guys see the pending reaction right here? This is priority gas, goodness gracious. 4.8 APR, by the way, look at that. That's the final APR, 4.8, look at that. 700, that's still not a terrible yield. Goodness gracious, are we gonna make it? This is priority gas on Phantom. Failed? Holy shit. Uh, Veloce, glad that you're here. <laughs> I believe the transpiring fuck. Maybe somebody else did it, right? Did somebody else do it? Okay, somebody else did it. So now look at this. So there's still 1,200. Hey, good for you guys. Good for you guys. Yeah, it's fine. Somebody else did it. But now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to stake. I'm going to stake 102. You guys can watch this in real life. I'm going to do a priority fucking stake. Pending. And look at this, you guys are gonna see it right on my screen as soon as the stake is, uh, as soon as the stake is confirmed. Do you guys see that I already have fucking 4.9 that I can take? Oh, uh, not two minutes, get the fuck out of here. Okay, well whatever, I'm claiming and I'm mistaken. It went through, yeah, somebody else did it though, not, not me. Somebody else must have just been a little extra fast. Claim it on stake, work. Okay, going back through again, going back through again. I got 107 now. By the way, the, re the EPR for next town is 17% already, but that's why this, this, this guy over here, uh, well anyway, Are you gonna make it? Okay, do you guys see that? For 107, I'm making five. That's about like honestly almost 5% EPR still just a fucking usurp. Yeah. You need a, you can't loop? Oh yeah, no. Uh, you mean like you're trying to loop it like multiple in a multi-call? You're trying to loop in a multi-call or something like that? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, that's beyond my skill set. Oh yeah, and you guys can sell. Like you guys are allowed to sell the fuck out of this coin. Red candles are not bad here, okay? Red candles are required to fucking, um, yeah, like take profit. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, like the TWAP is up. Do you know why or why the price is up? It's because the incantation put buy pressure, right? Because the incantation does raise the price of higher phantom. Also, it decays. Do you guys remember the part that it decays? Okay, so now I have 112. I'm going to stake again. 
You guys can usurp too if you want. Yeah. It's literally a 5% gain every time. Or almost, like almost five. I don't know. It's hard to fucking call. Basically speaking, the same EPR that you guys finalized with last epoch, that's like what you get every single time for usurping. So staking is here. And by the way, I get five more. I'm going to claim it again. This is very, very kind of like a, um, I don't know, a bit monotonous, but arguably that's a 5% yield every fucking loop through. I, w I will absolutely finalize this. I will fucking take the whole thing. By the way, I don't know why you're already staking. Oh, that's me, I guess, right? I'm like, why are you dropping EPR? And then I realize I'm usurping right now. You're saying the small amount caused the gas error? Claim it on stake. Okay, going back through. And by the way, every single time I go through, I get to take more usurping with me. Does that make sense? Because I'm staking a larger amount of Pyre Phantom. Okay, and we got five more to take. Yeah. Like, damn, look at that guy. That's just that one guy. Do you guys see how much fucking Pyre Phantom he's lost? Do you guys see this? Do you guys see this number? Yeah. So he's already lost, like, fucking uh, 50. He's lost 50 Pyre Phantom. Because he's just, again, every single usurping is also smoldering him. You know what I mean? So just from you guys playing... This is what I mean about don't hang out in here, right? I'm glad we have this uh, volunteer who's so willing. Yeah. I'm glad we have this volunteer who's so willing to uh, be our test dummy. But yeah, there, there is real risk here. By the way, that's why we have an orange fucking label. Oh, look at that. Do you guys see? By the way, it looks like, it looks like the rewards are finally empty. Do you guys see how there's no more in cans? Yeah, he donated his body to science. Do you guys see that there's no more incants here when I stake? Yeah, so that means that that means very likely that that was uh, whoever helped me usurp it all. We ended up with uh, yeah, we ended up with a fucking um, we all took a twenty percent yield out of usurping. <laughs> I basically went from what one hundred three to one twenty three. Yeah, you made ten with exit. Yeah, so I took twenty. Uh, I started with one hundred three. You guys all saw that for hours, and now I have one twenty three, and I am on staking. So I made a 20% on a fucking epoch because at least I read the fucking instructions. And by the way, I designed this. So like you guys just watched me do it like that. So you're like, I literally watched the designer of this fucking project. I didn't build it, by the way. Uh, we have the devs in the audience that did build it. But I did, in fact, I, was, I can quote that I'm the architect. Uh, you're not wrong there either, Alessio. Uh, anyway, so now look what I can do. I can just go to swap. I can take this balance and I can fucking just hammer. Yeah, the visionary. Yeah, I'm this. I'm the chief visionary officer. I fucking hate those people, <laughs> but it is a it is a real word, I suppose. And it does. Uh, I guess until I did this voyage, I don't think it mattered. Like I, I really didn't think that this was like different but i realize now i'm more aware of um of like how difficult it is to communicate vision and how how different people's visions are i just think that was like a learning experience for me the last two years uh, i didn't know that it was drastically like that was yeah uh yes electronic correct and anyway now i'm gonna by the way what is the price here what's the price the price is still 1098, right? So I do see a bunch of people fucking exited. I will now sell to fucking two ohm. 
right? Cha-ching. And I'll sell the two of them right here real quick, just for fun. But now, by the way, yeah, exactly, until the next epoch comes around. Now we're going to talk about... Um, Now we're gonna talk about how red candles can be good, okay? And I am going to, and by the way, 928, so we can see how that is. Who's going on here? Holders, let me take a look. By the way, do you guys see that the holder count has gone down to seven? Um, okay, Alessio, can you try using Control F5 or Shift F5 or doing a hard refresh? Yeah, can you do a hard refresh or a control F5 or a shift F5 on the on Pyroswap's website? Okay, you do okay, it is fine now. Phenomenal. Okay, so if you guys look at holders here, holders of stake power phantom, look at that. We saw this 885, but I don't think this number is correct, is it? Let's see if we ref, let's see if we refresh this. Um hmm. You know, I don't know if this is correct, um, but that's probably just the way that um, Phantom Scan works. Maybe Phantom Scan does not care about smoldering events. If that makes sense, right? Because you guys can see the transfers here: exit, 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 stake, 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 exit, 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 stake, stake, stake. These all—all uh, all these stakings are causing smolderings, right? Um, but this guy right here. You can see here it says the the max supply is 928. Would you guys agree that these the, the sum of these numbers is way higher than 928? Yeah, this is stake by phantom. Yeah, got it. Okay, I appreciate you mentioning that, Veloce. Got it. That makes sense. So it updates on a transfer. Okay, well, uh, yeah, we can clearly see by the way that the real amount this guy has is way lower than 885. It, it's a little bit hard to tell here, but again. Um, we are gonna, um, fuck man. Yeah. Um, we might be able to, uh, upgrade the dashboard later on to be a little bit more up to date than phantom scan on this issue, but we're working with what we got. And right now I am quite satisfied with how this worked out. So, um, you guys might now notice that look, it's now, now the price is back up. Who fucking knows what's going on here? But, um, yeah, 17% EPR, but guess what? The guy who thinks he's getting 70% EPR, he's not getting that 70% EPR. He's going to get usurped for it, right? Every single time. Um, well, at least now that you guys know that, um, it is now a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you do get a 20% yield. And by the way, you're allowed to take profit. Again, red candles can be good. So let's actually really drive that home, okay? Have you guys seen penultimate AMA? Have you guys seen that AMA I did? Okay, fantastic. And that was a, I think that was one of the best ones I've done in a while. Uh, and I was, I did it really early in the day. Like for me, it was like 1 a.m. And I was just so excited to like get out of bed that I immediately wanted to talk to people. And when you wake up at fucking bizarro hours, like 1 a.m., you're not immediately met with a, um, a you know, a society that wants to be uh, extroverted. <laughs> so I fucking, what I did is I jumped on my Discord stage and I just started talking about Pyroswap. Um, yes, exactly, Yahoob. Uh, Yahoob, it is my belief that people will kind of figure out uh, when the hours are for the last hour and then kind of like start checking on EPR then. Like that makes the most sense, right? Um, but at the same time, if they want to, they can also trade Pyre Phantom um, in the five hours before then as well. Does that make sense? Because uh, especially once we get above 0 0.8, when, you, when we get above 0 0.8, um, it'll make a lot more sense to trade it for the whole fucking epoch, right? Because you won't be able to, you won't have any problems with knights meta charging on you. So right now you will see activity on the price chart. And by the way, all of the volume that we just created from selling Pyre Phantom is gonna go do what? It's gonna make the incantation grow in size. Do you guys get that? So we saw 84 Pyre Phantom for this incantation. The next incantation could be, who fucking knows? We can actually look at it, can we? 
Let's look at um, if we go to Phantoms. Okay, if we go to Mead, if we go to this address. God, man, I hate. All right, let me let me solve the whole copy and paste issue here. All right, I'm just gonna manually put that zero in. I swear. Okay, so this is a uh, the Mead contract address. You can look at its token and you can see that it's 160 now. Do you guys see that it's already gone to 160? Do you guys remember what this was literally fucking 15 minutes ago? Eighty something exactly. So uh, yeah, do you guys understand? Uh, by the way, it's not gonna okay. It's not gonna go up every epoch. It might go down some epochs, but overall it'll increase. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's not a guarantee to be bigger every epoch, but like likely after every eight epochs it'll be up. Does that make sense? So you will see variation because. Uh, let's see. I could talk about Elliott Wave Principle if you want. You want to talk about Elliott Wave Principle? There we go. Elliott Wave Principle. So, Elliott Wave Principle is a form of TA that financial traders use to analyze market cycles and forecast market trends by identifying extremes in investor psychology and price levels, such as highs and lows, for looking for patterns in prices. Does that make sense? So, uh, you could say that Elliott Wave Principle is probably integral to like most of Pyroswap's designs. Does that make sense? Uh, and the point being is you have these different cycles. So you have a grand super cycle, which is a multi-century market cycle. Then you have super cycles, which are multi-decade. You have a cycle, which is one cycle to several years. A primary is a few months to two years. Intermediate week to months, minor weeks, minute days, minuet hours, and then sub-minuet minutes. This is similar to what we have going on in, um, in Pyroswap's uh, calendar, but we have days, epochs, hours, moments, and minutes. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyway, so this like the GPSE is modeled off for, off for the uh, Elliott Wave principle, and here I will I will link this in the chat if you guys want to read that. Um. Okay. Um. But the point being is, so it's not going to go up every single fucking, um, you're not going to see it always increase every epoch because believe it or not, it's delayed by one epoch. So it's almost like we have two different versions of compounding volume, but they do end up bleeding over. So um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. So yeah, it was 80 last time. It's 160 this time. It could be 120 next time. Do you get what I'm saying? But overall, it will climb. And as the epoch, okay. As the incantation climbs, what does it do? It, it puts more buy pressure on Pyre Phantom. And also, um, yeah, I know, I know. Because now the EPR is 10%. Like, do you think it's the same guy? Do you think it's the same guy? Let's check. Let's fucking check. I swear to God, I know the guy who did not just get usurped out of his fucking yield is doubling down. When will you learn to read the docs? When will you marmosets learn to just read the documentation? <laughs> All right, oh, look at this. No, it's a different guy. It's a different guy with 500. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see it? I'm, like, I, okay, well, I have great news for you guys. Uh, for those of you who are willing to show up to these AMAs, you stand to make a lot of money based on the fact that these people refuse to uh, read the dogs. <laughs> I literally have the Bobby Hill meme in the fucking chat. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And what's, you know, okay, by the way, right now it's not even that bad. Like they're not even getting wrecked, but what they are doing is they're not getting yield. Does that make sense? So they are getting smoldered. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like they do get smolders. Fucking A, man. Yeah. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> Uh, you know what, Veloce, I told them that they can double their position every week. So if they're playing with $5 this week, they can go to $10 next week. They can go to $20 in week three. And then after week three, we'll just let everybody be at their discretion. But again, 
this guy with 800, he's playing with $50. This guy with 500, he's playing with like $25. So both of these guys are just not reading. They're not, they're not listening at all. So, um, yeah, by the way, this is not a Ponzi scheme. So like, as long as D gents insist on being stupid shortcut takers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fixer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is why, um, the, I mean, you understand, I put a fucking yellow pop-up that literally steers people to other fucking DEXs. If you click navigate to Spooky Swap, it takes you to Spooky Swap. Does that make sense? If you, and then it says, hey, this is not a beginner-friendly DEX. Do you guys remember this? Like, you guys have seen this pop-up, right? And then there's a gigantic orange warning label that says, danger, read documentation fully right? And then even the background says beta testing in progress. Do you guys know what I'm saying? I know exactly, exactly. So, uh, th yeah, that's what I mean, Fexer, the fucking degen, they just, they just get tunnel vision on that fucking dashboard. By the way, this is one of the reasons dashboards are like literally some of the best things you can build in web three. By the way, this is a real dashboard. You guys can see that 10% is correct. That's like, that's not Ponzi nautical. Yeah, is that it? This is also why I don't want like YouTubers to kind of like, I'm not gonna be uh, shilling this on YouTube because this is yield scalping and not yield farming. I'm gonna write that real quick. Announcement, I'm gonna write that as an announcement. Fucking A. All right, I'm gonna do the, do the, red, the red candle fucking uh, description so you guys can understand that. I might make that a diagram too because it's an easy concept to understand in a diagram. Okay, my computer is not gonna be like, I'll do that later when I'm not on stage. Okay. So, um, Alessio, yeah, uh, Alessio, later on when people are playing with, I guess, sizable pieces of money, it will make sense to fucking smolder people into fucking, um, smoldering is all, like, like, flogging is also something that, um, that, uh, head witches can do to keep the other witches in line. Does that make sense? It's literally like you're cracking the whip to, like, get your investors into obedience. Uh, yeah, it does compound, doesn't it, Fexer? It does compound. Yeah, if it happens to you once, nobody cares. If it happens to you 50 times, now, now it's a problem. <laughs> uh, by the way, I want you guys to play as if there's 50 stakers. Well, you know what? We'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Oh, by the way, look at total stakes in previous epoch. Look at that, 57. 57 stakes in previous epoch. Total stakes in ultimate moment. Do you guys see that? Total stakes in ultimate hour. Do you guys see these numbers? Aren't those numbers great? Alessio, the thing is only if it, only if they, um, only if they gain something from it. Does that make sense? Because believe it or not, if you just smolder every single smolder, you're paying the same gas to hurt those investors a little less. Does that make sense? So one of the reasons that flogging is like disincentivized is because if one person does all of it, it does feel like a chore. Like I only did it like seven times because I was like, you know what? That's enough to demonstrate flogging. I'll just do the usurping instead. Um, and of course, I only usurped five times or whatever, four times, and that was all the fucking rewards, right? Everybody else, there was only um, there was only eighty rewards. So just from me fucking usurping, I was able to take twenty five percent of the pot. You guys get what I'm saying? Okay, so let's talk about red candles being good. Now, you guys have heard me preach about the knighthood side of the game. Does that make sense? Now, when a, when a red candle happens on 2 ohm, how can that be good? Who can answer that question? Like, name the scenario and name the actor that benefits potentially with uh, even a reason to buy for, uh, for when, when 2 ohm has a red candle. Like, why would that be good? What would be the circumstances that it'd be considered a good thing? Meeting. Thank you, Alessio. Yeah. So if, if um, a red candle on, on the peg coin can be considered a, a nerve candle, as it were, right? Does that make sense? Because what that means is um, nerve, by the way, N-U-R-V, yet Doc loves this idea, is called negative 
utility realized value. Does that make sense? So right now we have the, uh, let's look at the meet screen actually. So right now we have two of them up here at 0.14 and we have Pyre Phantom at 0.12. So right now it's not profitable to meet. You could meet with three on right now. That would be profitable maybe depending on the amount. Do I have, I have no three on this wallet, but okay. Uh, you could meet for three on right now and that would be profitable meet trash. And you guys are welcome to do that by the way. Um, or you can wait until the, until the divergence goes higher, right? Because now you guys can see that Pyre Phantom will actually get uh, transaction volume and, and along with buy pressure, right? Um, so meeting, because meeting has a uh, kind of like a multi-directional profit, meaning you can both get the, the rest of your bag pumped, you can pump your own position, and you can acquire more coins. Metatrage is like a, uh, it has like a, there's multiple benefits for the person who performs it successfully. You guys understand that already? So now we want to talk about what is the value in red candles on Pyre Phantom. Now, do you guys know this? And this is also why you don't need to, um, this is also why Pyre Phantom might not go up every single epoch, but it will go up over time. Because this is also a, uh, this is more, this is more about Elliott Wave Principle. We basically, by the way, that's why we have Elliott Wave Principle. Like, if you want to understand like the design principles of PyreSwap, if you understand Elliott Wave Principle, I just kind of caught, I'm not gonna say I copied and pasted it, but it was definitely an inspiration. And I almost, to be honest, I didn't even know what Elliott Wave Principle was until um, a few weeks ago. And most of the time I was um, kind of just building the idea of cycles and super cycles because I knew that's how markets worked, if that makes sense. Um, so I learn all the time that other people have thought of things before me and that's always refreshing. Okay. So let me go to general chat and I'm going to, I'm going to post some images here if I can, if it allows me to post images, we'll see if I have the ability to. Okay, so over in general chat, what I've done is I posted the uh, the velvet rope uh, image, and I have this lettering here, and this is A B C D and E. And right now, I want it to be clear: you're not actually seeing a uh, a velvet rope on the price chart. Does that make sense? All of the coins are going to be um, they're kind of like in a gravitational trap together. Does that make sense? Like, so it's it's like they. Um, they all climb together and therefore the price is kind of, um, yeah, they're not as volatile. Does that make sense? They're, they're less volatile because of their relationship. Does that make sense? Once they get above 0.8, it's a different dynamic. So um, the point being though, is that the space between the two um, brass posts is an epoch. Does that make sense? So you have epoch A and you've got e epoch E here. Does that make sense? Epoch number one and epoch number two. Does that make sense? And A right there is like the middle point, right? The third or fourth hour of the epoch, okay? Now, if, if the price of Pyre Phantom at time E is lower than time A, this does not imply that Pyre Swap does not work, nor is it even a bad thing. What it really means is that it's most likely that somebody uh, meted last epoch. Does that make sense? And they might have surged. They might have used a. They might have. They might have meted a lot of coins. Does that make sense? As you guys can see. Plenty of people have zero problem following the fucking um, the five dollar instruction, right? Like these guys, these heroes right here. So, um, arguably, you can also assume that some people will need like fifty dollars over a time, or maybe a hundred dollars over a time, or maybe five hundred dollars at a time. And what this can do if they sell it is this can cause a gigantic red candle on uh, on Pyre Phantom. Does that make sense? In which case. 
Pyre Phantom might be driven down to like 0.06 or some shit. Does that make sense? Let's say these would all be like 0.12 or 0.15 and then Pyre Phantom will be there at 0.15 but then somebody just crashes the shit at a, of, at a Pyre Phantom because they needed a bunch and um, Pyre Phantom gets driven down to 0.07 or something like that, right? And by the way, it was down at 0.07 a few weeks ago. Do you guys remember? It was down at 0.07. Do you guys remember that? Okay, phenomenal. I'm going to assume you guys do. Um, so, um, what this is, like what this is, if, if Pyre Phantom sees a red candle and this, in fact, makes Metatrage unprofitable, who is this red candle beneficial for? You remember, Doc? Okay, well, if you want to let other people answer, that's fine too. Aha, future stakers. Well done. It's actually not nerve. Yeah, it's not nerve, Doc. Yeah. Because nerve is actually the red candle caused from the, the peg coin side. Yeah, that's not that's not who it's beneficial for. Um, like, it's beneficial to realize that, but then additionally, um, we're talking about future stakers. We're talking about the witches like this this candle is actually beneficial for future witches because because they are now shielded so do you remember doc me talking about shielded pyre gas because this coin can now be acquired at the latest and the lowest so there's this image right here which i'll also paste Okay, so of course, Piaswap comes with instructional poetry and lowest to buy and latest to stake, themselves rich, a witch will make. Isn't that fucking clever? Um, that was uh, written by both me and ChatGPT. So I want you guys to, um, you know, at least acknowledge the, the shared credit there. But um, the point being is um, now... Somebody can do what, Fexer? Because Pyre Phantom is now down at 0 0.07 and all the other coins are up at 0 0, uh, 0.15. Like, so now you're now shielded. You are now shielded from meeting and metatrage. Because if you were to buy this token, right? If you were to buy this token and let's say you were to buy Pyre Phantom and it was like you, you caused it to pump higher than fucking 2 ohm, what would that kind of expose you to while you're trying to play for the witchfall, for the play for the incantation, right? Not only can your positive yield, um, not only can you experience like setback from smoldering, you can also experience setback from the coin that you're buying changing in price. Does that make sense? So if you're trying to capture, if you're trying to get a 1% yield, and someone metatrages you, your position down by 1%, you have effectively negated that 1% yield. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm assuming the, the plus sign there means yes, like you understand it? Okay, phenomenal. So, um, the best, the best pyre gas to acquire is the one that's shielded from metatrage. Like, you know that it's a scarce amount. You know that that's a, that's a scarce opportunity and it's not gonna wait around forever. Um, 
maybe if somebody surges a fucking huge supply over, it might seem like that problem is not solving. But you guys just witnessed in real time how much supply can get crushed away in a single round of the incantation. Did you guys all witness that? You guys all saw how much that one player fucking got like 50 fucking Pyre Phantom, which is arguably like 6%. The guy got crushed by 6%. So even if he did get 7% yield, like he's literally netting one and then he didn't even get that. That guy just fucking, yeah. God bless him. What a champ. The generosity of some people. So do you guys understand how a red candle that brings... What I want to get across to you guys specifically is that um, just because Pyre Phantom is lower in price... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a true uh, altruist. Do you guys, I want you guys to understand that Pyre Phantom taking a hit in price, especially the electronic, right? Because electronic holds a bunch of Pyre Phantom, right? Um, set your dump alarms. <laughs> Uh, 12k what? Pyre Phantom? Oh, so you're like one quarter of the supply? How much is it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, you're, you're like, how much is it? Okay, yes, yeah, so you're about half the supply. Alex, you're half the supply. <laughs> okay, I'm like uh, 10 to 15% of the supply, you know, but like, I'm the fucking operator. <laughs> Well, yeah, sure, but it decayed. It, it probably decayed, you know, there as well. So that might have been, you know, you were, you were 40K and it was 80K supply at one point. I don't fucking know. But um, anyway, I want Electronic to at least understand if you see Pyre Phantom take a hit in price, that is not necessarily, yeah, exactly. So honestly, Electronic, if you have that much Pyre Phantom, you now can in fact, you know, compound your way back to profitability very very likely especially because you took the time to um uh be here for the whole presentation i hope that makes sense to you guys okay do you guys have any other questions because i should probably stop now because we've gone three and a half hours yeah so uh electronic i want you to know do you guys now understand that it is realistic to make money this way and then in fact is a perpetuating system and that even has a positive feedback loop and um, also not for beginners, right? Like don't be a shortcut taking Marmoset. Like you guys deserve to win for investing the time in reading the fucking dozens of the, all the documents. Like honestly, when, when we finally make the PyroSwap documentation, it's probably gonna be like 150 pages long. Like I, I don't know how I can make it fucking shorter than 150 fucking pages. Um, but uh, you guys understand like you, you deserve to actually win because you are more patient and you are more studious than these fucking assholes. Does that make sense? Like that, by the way, that is a fundamental of life. Like impatient people don't really beat patient people. And that's what I had to tell myself. I know, Fexer, but that's what I had to tell myself when it took 14 months to finish this as opposed to five months. Yeah, two marshmallows versus one marshmallow, for real. If you guys don't know about the marshmallow experiment. Well, Fexer, I want you to know something. People will end up learning it through the general chat. So now that you guys are in the general chat, um, I promise that um, people like the troop will, um, we do want people to win with this, right? We don't, you know, does that make sense? We already have like fucking 9,000 people in the fucking, um, across all five discords, it's like 9,000 people. So like, there's no real reason for people to not learn this. Um, they just have to fucking learn to play with $5 until they feel, you know, they get better at it. And if these clowns, and I say that as a, the, the ringmaster of a circus, but, uh, <laughs> if these marmosets, um, want to be like marmosets, yeah, play marmoset games and win marmoset prizes. That guy is fucking down almost 5% per epoch. So like that guy these fucking guys, they could basically be taking negative 20% daily yield. Does that make sense? Do you guys see that? If we're, if we're, if we're staking 57 times an epoch and they're like, 
Do you guys get what I'm saying? And if they don't know that they're being usurped, they're taking fucking 5% negative yield every epoch. That's their net. Yeah, Fexer, that's what they think. But there's positive yield and negative yield now. And, you know, your incants are not fucking claimed until you claim them, right? They're assigned to you, but they're not fucking um, guaranteed to you. Anyways, uh, yeah, this this uh, this project could absolutely fucking change DeFi, and I mean DeFi, DeFi, not like fucking uh, meme coins on Solana or fucking NFTs on fucking Arbitrum. Okay, um, yeah, like DeFi, DeFi, like like the part of DeFi that deals with APR. Yeah, thank you, Kid Dezo. Yeah, and by the way, uh, when there's nobody on stage, did you guys notice that like? Sticking in at the last minute, it had a little bit of excitement there. Did you guys feel the excitement when you saw the fucking current Pyre Phantom staked? Did you guys feel that in the last 10 minutes there? That, that ultimate moment moment? We called, the, um, by the way, you guys might have noticed that we changed it to the ultimate moment instead of the final moment. Yeah, Clan Tonso, because DeFi means decentralized finance, not like, you know, uh, profile picture NFTs. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with those. I think that um, arguably they... If they're priced correctly, it makes sense, but um, you guys get what I'm saying. Also, utility NFTs, but I'm not gonna preach about that all day long. But did you guys did you guys feel the excitement there? Yeah. Well, okay, Fexer, I believe, by the way, Fexer, PyreSwap will eventually have NFTs associated with it, but those NFTs will have utility, and they meaning meaning that you can actually build um, credit rating with them. You can in fact um, Fuck, I'll explain more about that later. But yeah, um, those NFTs will also be useful for the, um, the uh, fucking social deduction game. Does that make sense? So being a holder of that NFT allows people to have more faith on whether that, whether that person is playing as a knight or a witch. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, electronic is fucking addicted. Okay, well, anyway, now that you guys know, um, First of all, the fact that these guys are playing with 800, that, that guy alone has 4% of the whole fucking supply, right? So I don't know how you could end up holding 4% of the supply of a token and not like research that shit. That's fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Um, if, if I knew I was 4% of the like, that's so wild to me. Um, especially because I've done those AMAs and I've this has been going on for 15 fucking months. But anyway, we're here now and... Um, I was hoping we'd have like more like 30 people show up, but again, this will be uploaded to YouTube and um, people can, in fact, um, yeah, they can learn from there. I hope the guys who are staking right now, at least they watch the YouTube version, but this is going to be now a three hour and 40 minute YouTube video. So, okay. Do you, does, does anybody else have any questions? But yeah, if you can imagine that excitement at $5, imagine playing it for $20. Imagine playing it $100. Imagine playing it for $500. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, it compounds. So this is day one. Oh yeah, Fexer, for sure. Yeah, like if it actually is not a piece of shit, I agree. But nobody like thinks that deeply, which is unfortunate but it also means that the things that the senior circus builds are going to blow the fuck out of everybody else's um blow the fuck it's going to blow everybody else's shit out of the water that's what i'm <laughs> i'm kind of exhausted because doing three hours and 40 minutes of streaming uh definitely takes its toll so nobody has any more questions okay any other questions of course I will be doing this probably just doing um, uh, for the next like few weeks. You can expect that I will do a stage for like the last hour of one or two epochs a day. Does that make sense? So I'll just jump on stage for the last hour. I might make it an event. I might make them always events like ultimate hour, right? And I'll just make it a thing that, hey, this might happen. It might not happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. 